Hey folks, it's Ray, DCRainmaker.com here. Uh, it is pretty breezy out here. Uh, it is sustained, there's the, the water coming through there. Uh, it is sustained at about 50 kilometers an hour, gusting to 60, 65 kilometers an hour. Uh, so we're just gonna get this thing straight in the air uh, because your screens are gonna be covered in water in probably just a second. So I'll talk as I'm going once we're up in the air here. Uh, we've got the Air 2S uh, ready to go. Check complete. Hit that recording button, get that going there. There we go, recording and up in the air we go. We're on normal mode right now, so a bit of a wind test to see how things go. It's all clear out here. Bring it up. There we go. I'm gonna pull back a little bit, or try to anyways. Come on, come on back. There we go. Now, at this point, it's using its optical sensors uh, to stay in place over the brake wall right here. Uh, the challenge is when I try to go back, it's not responding at all. At this point, it's simply just going that way, drifting with the wind. So I'm gonna switch over to sport mode and then see if I can bring it back, and you'll see it slides back just fine. Now I'm gonna bring it back over to here to show you that stability-wise, if you can see that, you know, it's, it's moving there, but no problem. So I'm trying to keep the lens away from the, um, the water spray here right now. Uh, so stability, it's right on top of the ground. This is using those optical sensors uh, in the aircraft itself underneath the bottom side of it. Once we got going here is pure GPS. So at this point, let's get, uh, let's get rolling. Here we go, and you can see, you know, like gimbal wise, uh, spot on there, no problems, cruising along. I've got it 4K30 right now, just to keep things kind of simple. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's moving pretty fine. Like, there's, it's responsive. I'm gonna stick it right there for a second and just let it watch these waves. Let's just go down like this, watch some of these waves for a second. Uh, and one of the things to keep in mind is that the Air 2S has a top wind speed, a recommended wind speed anyways, of about 38 kilometers an hour, about 23 or 24 uh, miles per hour. Um, however, the top speed in sport mode is significantly higher, which is what we're leveraging right now. We'll get back to that a little bit later on. By the way, quick note, if you are finding this video interesting, useful, or something like that, go ahead and whack that like button the bottom there. It really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. You can see it's kind of crawling along. This is straight into the wind at this point. So it's not going too fast, about 13 kilometers an hour in sport mode into the wind. So we'll go down here. What we're gonna do is actually we're gonna go above it a little bit. I think this is where it's breaking. Uh, we'll go a little bit left here. Uh, let's try to get over this, really these waves are coming in and we'll switch it into 120 frame per second mode and get some nice slow-mo of the waves themselves. I think this will work right about here, should be good. I'm gonna switch over to slow-mo mode now. I'm gonna save that video off. Go down to slow motion. You can see the bottom there, 120 frames per second. So we're good. And we'll hit record on that. You can see, there we go, that's a strong wind warning I was finally looking for. Uh, it's, it's definitely breezy. So as I mentioned before, it's measuring a couple different spots. I've got my handy dandy wind uh, measuring device right here, uh, screaming along. I've also got the end of the pier is the official wind station, just happens to be there. So I can pull up the data from that and see the actual wind speed, uh, but it's cruising. Now, mind you, if you stick to the end of the video, it was definitely howling much more yesterday and I came out there as well to check things out. And that's some pretty crazy stuff. So you can see here, it's pretty smooth. Uh, no real issues with this. I'm gonna go down to that lighthouse though and do a little bit of active track and to kind of see the stability with the automated modes. So we'll switch back into normal mode there for a little flight down that direction. Pretty easy to spot, it's not too far away at this point. Head on down there. And again, no issues in terms of stability, a little bit of horizon shift right there, which makes sense, a horizon tilt, sorry, which makes sense uh, given the winds here. One of the things that happens between that maximum wind speed and the maximum aircraft speed is you tend to see issues with the gimbal. Uh, and you know, the gimbal here is pretty stable, but you can see it's starting to kind of tilt a little bit there. Uh, so let's go ahead and dump it into active track mode, get a little bit closer right here. There we go, they're doing some work down there today. Get rid of that warning. Uh, and we'll go ahead and into active track mode. So I do that, we just simply highlight the lighthouse just like that. Uh, now, of course, since the lighthouse isn't going anywhere, active track by itself isn't super useful. Uh, spotlight is there, so this will keep it uh, locked in place right now as I move around. So I can just move the sticks and it's gonna go ahead and keep uh, that lighthouse centered in the frame there. As you can see, no problem at all. I can go up, I can go down. Uh, it's gonna do that automatically, uh, adjusting the gimbal tilt. Uh, but I wanna go into one of the quick shot modes instead. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Back over to the quick shot modes right there. Uh, and we will circle this like this. Let's see, what are some of our quick shot options? Let's just do a circle. Keep it nice and simple and start. There we go. Move this out of the way, there we go. And you can see right now, it's not going super fast on this circle. You see 0% on the right-hand side there. Uh, it's getting there, but it's definitely slow. 
So we're gonna let it do this. I'll speed this up so you can see what's going on. And while it's doing that, I'm gonna clean the lens again. There you go. You can see it's slowly working its way around about 25% right now, but it's doing it like it's super stable. As you can see here in the full res uh, video, it looks really nice and clean. This wind is like tempting my tripod. I wish you could see this because it is, it is like howling, just barely holding on right there. Uh, now, as we rip around the backside here, we're going to see things will speed up a little bit because it's got that tailwind with it. Uh, but again, this is looking really nice and clean here, um, unlike my camera, which is looking pretty, pretty salty right now. Okay, let's kind of finish up that automated move there. So we'll go ahead and we'll kind of move on back. So we'll cruise out of that to get back into regular video mode here. Go back into recording. Again, we're in sport mode, so we've got a bit of, a bit of speed to work with here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get myself positioned so I can really take advantage of this speed uh, with a tailwind cruising across. So I'm gonna bring it down the, the brake off right now. So I'm kind of going across the wind. Uh, and that's one of the tips. So if you find yourself out here in a situation like this with your, your drone and you can't get it back, a tip is to always go crosswind uh, because that allows you to kind of cut against the wind. Very similar concept in sailing. Uh, and it's something I've used for many different tests out here when the wind is really at the extremes of the aircraft's capabilities. Uh, and you can see we're just cruising along crosswind. Nothing very fast. Um, you know, 30 kilometers an hour in full sport mode right now. So just kind of wrap your head around that for a second. Uh, normally I should be topping at about 70 kilometers an hour. We're gonna see that as we go down the brake wall here. And I'm gonna bring myself right above the brake wall and just scream down that brake wall full speed. So here we go, making the turn. And now you can see 64, 66, 68, uh, just really cruising along here, just at the maximum limits, but not above it though, surprisingly enough. Not even like you're taking that tailwind and going beyond the specs, which is 68 kilometers an hour for the very wet. Uh, there we go. And that just uh, tapped my screen there uh, the whole bit. That was a, that was a wet one. Uh, so at this point, we're gonna try to get ourselves back, which might take a while because it's straight into the headwind. So again, using some of the same techniques, that tripod is so going over. Going back up here, you can see not too shabby, 20, not too bad, 26 kilometers an hour. I'll take that. That's acceptable to me right now. It's not fast, but I'm gonna get there. Battery life, at this point, 45% uh, left or so. I think we've been out here, I don't know how long I've been out here, 10 or 15 minutes now, 10 minutes, I think. So it's not burning through battery too badly, despite the winds here, uh, which is what I've seen in most of my other tests. Now, if you haven't seen my full Air 2S, all the new things to know video, check that out in the corner there. I've also got an ActiTrack video coming up, or probably already out, uh, versus the Skydio 2 drone that's worthwhile checking out as well. Uh, hold on, this could be worthwhile. Let's give it a second here. These guys went straight through the... There we go, this truck coming in. These guys went straight through the waves last time. So let's see, my screen here, a bit wet. Let's see if they'll do it again. Uh, there. No biggies right now. Now they lucked out. Nothing, nothing crazy there. That's a shame. So with those guys back in, let's go ahead and get back in myself here. My screen is a, a bit, a bit wet. Now I've got two options when it comes to landing this right here. The first is to put it on the ground and let it land itself or to hand catch it. Personally, I'm a hand catcher kind of guy. I just find that in these sort of conditions, uh, it's my best bet to get it on the ground. Uh, though right now it's not too bad. Uh, I just don't want like a rogue wave to hit it at the last second. So I'm probably gonna go for the hand catch here. Uh, my hand's a bit chilly, but it's all right. So bring it on in. I'm gonna turn around again so the lenses don't get, uh, get any spray on them. You can see moving our way backwards, moving backwards. Uh, switch over to normal mode, we'll see if it'll stay put. Eh, not, not well. It's not liking that. Go back to sport. Okay. There we go. And just pop it down a little bit lower. There we go. And as soon as you turn it over, it automatically shuts itself off and it's done. So as you can see, there are no problems at all in these wind conditions, uh, despite being quite some conditions. This test is also done because I've now got liquid in my lightning connector there. Uh, so this, this controller is done for a little while. My phone's done for a little while. Perfect timing. Now, one final tip for high wind flying is to always have an out, always have a safety. Uh, in my case, my safety is that the wind is coming from the water towards the beach. So I can always get myself back to the beach and lay on there. 
I don't ever do these tests when the wind is going out to sea because that's a poor life choice. In that case, if something goes wrong, uh, the wind's more powerful than I expect, then I can't get the drone back upwind again. So always fly yourself uh, into the wind and then return back. Also, if you go downwind uh, quite a ways, keep in mind that may impact your battery coming back up again. So do plan for that. Always have a buffer 20, 30% or so to work with uh, in case you get yourself in a pickle. Uh, now, I'm gonna leave you with a little bit of footage from yesterday, uh, some of the craziness out there. Uh, it was howling out yesterday, incredibly strong waves and wind, uh, and this thing had no issues at all. With that, thanks for watching, enjoy. Again, whack that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology videos.